Namaste. Namaste and welcome to Friday Evening Yoga. And today we're going to revisit our standing flow, add a little bit extra to it, and we're going to get to it in a different way. We're going to start from standing, we won't do any seated limbering at all. Um, so for those of you who find the seated limbering parts a little bit more challenging, then this will possibly be the one to uh, re-watch and revisit. So coming to standing on your mat in a comfortable position, you can rest your palms together at the center of your chest if you like, or arms down by the side as you prefer. Closing your eyes or gazing gently downward. First, bring your body to a little steadiness, if not a little stillness. Feel the soles of the feet on the floor. And allow the body to organize itself upwards or upright or lifted from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. Take this moment to step away from the rest of your life, the rest of your day, and step into your yoga space. And notice if that mental gymnastics that you've just done softens the shoulders, softens your face, softens your breath. Allows you to find a little extra stillness. Notice how you're feeling today. And notice your breath. Whenever you're ready, you can gently deepen your breath exhaling and engaging across the navel to empty more completely. Breathing deeply into the sides of the body, the chest, the back. Breathing out slowly, deeply and fully, engaging across the navel. Breathing into the rib cage, the collarbones, the shoulder blades. Breathing out slowly, deeply, completely. And finding this three dimensional breath, trying to find extra space for the breath to come into by emptying the lungs a little more completely every exhalation. And see if you can do that as well as relaxing your shoulders, your jaw, your tongue, your face. When you're ready, if you've had your hands up against your chest, relax them to your sides and drawing your chin towards your chest. And first observing just the natural aid of gravity to the head, to lengthen those spaces between the shoulder blades, across the top of the shoulders and the back of the neck. And then rolling your head so that one ear comes towards your shoulder, opening up the opposite side of the neck and chin to chest, rolling to the opposite side. A little side to side, Exploring that sensation down the side of the neck into the shoulders, the chest, the back, the jaw, the ear, the temple, the side of the eye. Wherever your connections take you. If you want to, you can make circles with your neck. And remember, you can make much smaller circles than your uh, semicircles were, if that suits you better or you can do a different movement if you prefer. Reversing your rotation. And when you're ready, 
bringing your head back to center, opening your eyes if they've been closed, just doing a little gentle uh, rolling of the shoulders. Rolling of the shoulders, why not? Let's start there. And then the opposite way as well. A nice, subtle, intimate movement, contained, not too expansive yet. And then when you're ready, you can take your feet a little further apart. I seem to have stuck to my mat somewhat. Um, they don't need to be really wide. You can have your feet, whatever feels good to you, softness in the knees, and then with nice loose arms, just gently twisting from side to side. And as you twist, perhaps a gentle tap of the hands against the body, a lifting in the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles, not so you're gripping, but just so you can feel the support, feel the engagement. Allowing your head to follow your movement, the shoulders, elbows, fingers to soften. See if you can do this and smile, or at least keep your face nice and relaxed. Perhaps feel the difference in the distribution of weight, or effort across the feet. And when you're ready, you can free your feet. So you pivot on your toes as you move from side to side. Great practice um, for our pivoting on our feet during the standing sequence tonight. And it's one of the reasons why we practice this variation of Kati Chakrasana, transferring the weight between the two sides of the body doing it in a balanced way, doing it steadily with great stability. And then when you're ready, you can allow your feet to come to steadiness and just let your body lose a momentum a little bit at a time until you come back to standing steady yourself in the center. Feet stay wide, knees stay soft, so we've got that stability. We're going to firm up this space in the center of the body, make your left elbow nice and soft, and then start making your big shoulder circles, big arm circles. And you can be as expansive as you choose. And whenever you're ready, perhaps allowing the rest of your body to follow this movement. So firm in the feet, Feel the feet working, perhaps they're pressing slightly away from each other or just pressing slightly down into the floor a bit more than you were thinking and allow your head to follow the movement too. Reversing whenever you're ready to go the opposite way. And just enjoying that connection of movement into the other areas of the body. How many parts of the body are moving as you make these rotations? Is it reaching all the way down to your toes? And then releasing on this side, observing the two different sides. Firming in the belly again, maybe just a touch of firmness in the buttocks as well. Soft in the right elbow, same thing. So starting perhaps with more of an arm movement than a whole body movement. But when you feel drawn to expressing a little bit more, perhaps opening up the sides of the body, allowing your head to turn, feeling the feet working, the feet active. If you notice your center of gravity, your uh, center point of weight moving around, that's great too. You don't have to notice all those things, but maybe you do. And whenever you're ready, reversing that rotation, keeping the elbow soft, making as much movement through your, the rest of your body as you feel inclined to. Perhaps if you've spent a lot of the day sitting, you don't want to do too much wobbling around at the, this beginning part of the class. But if you've been uh, already quite active today, and no one or two of you have, and you might enjoy the opportunity to keep that undulation going. One more in this direction. And releasing your arm down to the sides. We're going to take our hands onto our hips. The knees are already soft. 
and just making nice subtle circles with the hips to begin with. So trying to keep your head steady, your feet steady, just moving the hips around that center point of the body and reversing to go the opposite way as well. You might feel uh, it useful to engage slightly in the front of the body and in the hips, uh, not in the hips, in the buttocks as you move. Then stopping in your center, we're gonna go again, but this time using more of the body. So if you would like to, optional, you can uh, do a little bit more of a rotation and allow your torso and more of your legs to be involved as well. Whenever you're ready, you can reverse that rotation going the opposite way. I'm trying to enjoy the process, enjoy the process of limbering, feel your way through the body. Notice the parts that feel great as you do this and the effect afterwards. Notice also the stiffer parts, that's okay. And when you're ready, coming back to center. I'm just turning so that you can see, but we'll do some uh, uh, back bending or some spinal undulations. So let us begin by drawing the hands in front of the body, soft in the knees, as you inhale here, then exhale, lengthen the fingertips away, tuck the tailbone under chin to chest, and then inhale, draw the elbows back. Open the palms, lift the tail behind you, open the, chest, open the chin as well. Exhaling, hands towards each other, rounding through the spine, Inhaling, opening through the front of the body. Exhaling. And inhaling. Exhaling. And inhaling. Let's do one more. Inhaling to finish. And then just bringing the spine to a more neutral point floating the arms down to the sides, wiggling anything that needs wiggling. It's all good. Okay, so uh, keeping with a little bit of a spring theme, let's do a gentle side bending. Um, we did this a few weeks ago, I believe, but uh, I will take, it through, uh, take you through it again anyway. So for this practice, we're going to take the weight off one side. So, we're going to lift the right heel and lift the left arm at the same time. Just let the hips come a little bit to the left as we reach the right arm over the front of the body and the left arm over the head. And then coming back to the center, float the right heel down, lift the left heel, softening that knee, bending over to the left. So we're doing a really nice, gentle uh, sway from side to side. And at the same time, we're using the feet differently on each side as well. And you can let your hip come out to the left as you bend to the right, lifting the right heel. And let your hip come to the right as you lift the left heel and bend to the left. Just a little bit from side to side. Quite firm in the belly muscles here. And we'll do one more in each direction. Very good. And then coming back to the center, just floating the arms down to the side, rolling the shoulders, wiggling anything that needs wiggling after that. So our final standing uh, is going to be standing pose, standing practice is going to be balancing and wiggling as well. So we're gonna take the weight onto our right leg first little softness in this knee. So we don't want to lock the standing leg straight because otherwise we just hang on our joints. Feel the buttock and the thigh of that standing leg working. Choose a point of focus ahead of you that is not moving. Hands on the hips or out to the side. Soft uh, bent left knee and making knee circles with the left knee. So firm in the belly, firm in the buttocks, maybe even drawing the shoulder blades towards each other to keep that lift in the chest. Use your arms for support or hold something. Hold a wall or a chair, reverse the rotation whenever you're ready. 
and just working with what comes naturally to you. Don't force a larger circling if you feel a clonking in your hip. You can keep it nice and intimate and small and steady. We'll do one more on this side because of all the talking. And then float both feet to the floor. Observe the difference between the two sides. And perhaps you can feel that sort of vibrancy, that aliveness in the right leg that's been doing all of that holding. And that's all the micro movements that we've been making, which help us to strengthen the legs. Same thing on the other side. So soft in the left knee so that you can firm the buttock and the thigh of the standing leg. Reach the arms out or onto the hips. Soft right knee and then making big hip circles. I'm not sure if you heard Poppy sneezing there, but she sneezes very loudly. <laughs> okay, so a little firmness in the belly, firmness in the buttocks. We'll maybe do one more in this direction and then go the opposite way. And this is my harder direction, harder uh, side to balance on. So using that point of focus if you need to, or using the support of a wall or a chair, doesn't matter if we need a little extra support sometimes in life. Okay, let's float that foot down to the floor as well. Feeling the difference between the two sides. I would like to do this again, but with figure of eights. So see how you get on. If you want to choose something for support, you can. Weight onto the right leg, bending the left knee, and then making a figure of eight with the left knee behind the body and across the body and behind the body and across the body. We're just going to go in one direction with the figure of eights. And we'll just do one more, she says. Floating the feet to, together on the floor, observing the difference between the two sides. Perhaps you're beginning to feel that energy building in the legs, taking the weight onto the left foot, same thing on the opposite side. If you can, try to get the knee across behind the body and in front of the body in that figure of eight. Whew. She says, let's do two more of these. And perhaps an extra one as well, because I have a feeling that we've done more on the opposite side. So three more in total. Woohoo! And then floating the feet together. And now what our body is really asking for is some release from all of that effort. And we're going to give it by coming to the end of the mat and taking a forward bend. So taking the arms up as we inhale. And as you exhale, drawing the hands through the center of the body, soft in the knees to fold forward. And here in your forward bend, first forward bend of the practice, you can have your feet a little bit wider if you want. You can hold elbow to elbow if you like, or you can have the fingertips or the palms on the floor and perhaps just sway the upper body from side to side. If it doesn't feel comfortable to sway, you don't need to, you can simply hold. And if you want to, you can extend through one leg and then the other a little bit like we do in down dog, but we're going in that direction. So you don't need to use this posture to do that if you don't want to. Perhaps in the center, gently shaking the head from side to side to release any tension in the back of the neck. And then when you're ready, walking your hands out in front of you until you come into a comfortable position for your down dog pressing the hands into the mat and then softening both knees, one heel at a time to the floor. Walking through your down dog, pressing your chest always towards your thighs. And we want the fingertips and the heels of the hands making the most effort. Heels of the hands probably make about 60% of the effort here in this, this position for most people. Lifting in the belly muscles, just padding from side to side, beginning to waken up the back lines of the body. When you're ready, you can bend your knees deeply and take the knees wide, allow the feet to be wide, the hands to be wide and circle your hips around 
the knees themselves. As if you were drawing a circle on the floor with your belly button. And going the opposite way as well. Very good. We're going to come back to the center and bring the knees towards each other. And they don't have to touch, but towards each other is good. And starting with the right leg first, we're going to lift the heel up behind us, looking forward, opening the chest, and exhale as we draw the knee underneath the body, lift the heel towards the buttock and the nose towards the knee. Inhaling, looking forward, lifting the heel behind you, exhaling, rounding through the spine. Inhaling, looking forward. Exhaling, rounding through the spine. This time we're gonna inhale and lengthen the right leg, sorry, behind us. So the foot comes to the floor. And then from here, we're going to move the toes on the floor towards the right hand, and then move the toes on the floor towards the left side of the body. So it's not gonna get anywhere near the left hand, but over to the left. So just swinging from your hip forwards and around behind. At the same time, keep the arms really active. So we don't collapse the chest forward, the elbows aren't bending any deeper than a soft bend. Helps sometimes to think of drawing the uh, hands apart from each other to keep that lift in the center of the body. And then the next time your foot goes round to the left, we're going to leave it there, swing the, right, the left foot around to the left, Take your weight onto your left arm and reach your right arm up. Press into that left hand, the left shin, the left foot. And here, we're gonna make three nice big circles with our arms, our right arms, not the left arm. That would be hard. Wonderful stuff in this baby wild thing. After the Easter break, we're going to look at full wild things. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, and then rolling back towards the mat. So pivoting on your knee, your right leg is out behind you and we're going to swing the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand, tuck the back toes under and make a little hula hooping here in our hula hooping lunges. Very good. So you can use a couple of blocks to lift the floor towards you or you might turn your hands on fists instead of on palms because it's quite nice to release them. And the opposite way as well. Very good. And then when you're ready, you can plant the hands back down again, lengthen the back leg a little, and we're going to step our front foot, the right foot back to the left, so we're in downward facing dog again. And here in our downward dog, just giving a paddle, noticing the difference between the two sides of the body. And you can do a waving vinyasa or two here. If you want to do this from your knees, you can. If you want to do it from your down dog, you can. Well, either way, drop the buttocks towards the heels, look towards your feet, and then press off the toes to round through the spine. As the shoulders come over the hands, opening your chest by feeling that dragging sensation of the palms back towards the body. And then, coming back the way you came. So bending the knees, coming through hands and knees or a crouching dog back to whichever position you started in. One more like that, pressing forward from the toes all the way to open. And in this one, maybe just doing a little wave of the chest from side to side, if that feels good. A softness in the elbows and the knees. And if you want to press up through plank into downward dog, you can. And then from downward dog, little paddle. We're going to release the knees down towards the mat and do our um, limbering on the opposite side. So tucking the left heel under, inhale as you lift the left heel behind you, exhale round through the spine, chin to chest, nose to knee, heel to buttock. Inhaling forward and open, exhaling rounding under. Inhaling, lifting in the belly, exhaling, rounding under, 
And then inhale, just lengthening the left leg behind you. So here, allowing your hands to be really supportive, sliding your left toes towards your left hand, and then on the floor, sliding the left toes behind the body to the right. Sliding the left toes all the way to the right hand or in that general direction and sliding behind the body. It's the opposite side. We're doing a few of these backwards and forwards. Try to avoid collapsing in your chest by pressing the hands slightly apart, keeping the elbows a little soft to keep that lift. And you can look in the direction of where your foot is going if it's useful to you to do that. Next time your foot goes behind you, we're going to pivot on the right knee and roll onto that side of the body to lift the left arm up into the air. Really firm on the right shin, foot and arm and making nice big circles with the left arm. Three lovely chest opening circles as we firm the buttocks and the belly muscles. And then to come out of this, you're just going to turn back towards the mat, pivoting on your right knee. And then from here, sliding your left foot all into the outside of your left hand and our hula hoop lunges. So just moving the hips around in a circle. You might move on your feet a little. You might like to take fists or blocks to support and reversing your rotation to go the opposite way as well. I find that in one direction, I focus more on the front leg and in the opposite direction, I focus more on the back leg. Very good. And then from here, we're going to place the hands flat on the floor, tuck the back leg long so we can easily step the front leg back into downward facing dog and do a nice little paddling on the down dog. And then from here, we're also going to do our beautiful waving vinyasas. So either knees down or not, pressing off the toes to round through the back and then open the chest and then pressing back the way either through plank or through hands and knees. And one more like that, pressing off the toes to round through the back, opening the chest. And uh, perhaps this time bending the knees to come back. When you're ready, walking your feet towards your hands so you end up at the opposite end of the mat in a forward bend. Just relaxing the backs of the hands towards the floor or holding elbow to elbow, soft in the knees, as soft as you need to, to feel comfortable here. You might find just a touch of lift in the belly muscles helps to make this posture feel a bit more comfortable. And also you might enjoy a gentle nod or shake of the head. And then we're going to come up by bending the knees deeply, pressing into the feet, rolling up through the spine. When you come to the top, if you need to, hands straight to Namaste, but if you don't feel dizzy, reach the arms out to the side and up. And then bring the hands back down to the center of the chest. Take a moment here to allow yourself to arrive in this position. Allow the body to find its way back to upright. Allow the blood to get back to where it's been. <laughs> and when you're ready, you can relax your hands down. Adjust your clothing as you need to. I always seem to need to. I don't know about you guys. Hey ho, it's all good. When we're ready, now we're fully limbered for our standing sequence. So we're going to do it all together and we might get the opportunity to do it several times. Yay, how exciting. Okay, so starting in Tadasana at the front of your mat, I'm going to step back with my right leg first. So always turning to the right side of the mat if you need to adjust your cameras. Um, and so here in your Tadasana, maybe just checking that your feet are in a good position for you, firming the belly, the buttocks, rolling the palms of the hands forward, lengthening through the crown of the head. As you inhale, lift your palms up in front of you, looking up, opening the chest, 
And as you exhale, bring the palms together, soften the knees and fold over your legs into a forward bend. Reach your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, roll your shoulder blades towards each other or hold wrist to wrist or hold a belt. And in Dvikonasana, you can keep your knees as bent as you need to. And just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. We're gonna soften the hands and let the fingertips brush the floor as we sit into a deep chair pose, reaching the hands forward. Firm in the belly, weight into the heels, firm in that space between the shoulder blades. And we're gently going to lengthen the legs a little and then bend them a bit, bit deeper. So we're just almost bouncing, but in slow motion, up and down. Three times will be sufficient. Take your weight onto your left foot on the ball of the right foot and step the right foot back as far as it will go. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Press into that left leg to bring yourself into an upright lunge for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then we're going to allow the arms to relax as we turn to the long side of the mat, the right heel comes down to the mat and we're gonna lengthen through the left leg as well. We take a moment here just to let the left leg go. Whew, yeah, I'm here, it's all good. And then we can do our twisting cartwheeling arms variation. We're going to do three of these. So reaching the arms nice and wide. As you bend your left knee, come onto the ball of your right foot, Press the right palm across the body, lengthening the left arm behind you like a twisted variation of extended side angle pose. And then cartwheeling the arms back to the center, come into horse stance. And here, the toes are both pointing out the way, so you have to move on the feet a little bit. And we're just going to play with the weight between the two feet. You can lift the toes. You can just simply Play with the weight between the two feet or you can lift the heels if it feels more comfortable <laughs> and then from here straightening the legs turning the feet to the left reaching the arms wide we'll do it again two more times bend the left knee press the right palm across the body pivoting on the toe of the right leg reaching the arms wide then cartwheeling pressing through the legs coming back to horse stance and playing a little bit with the weight from side to side very good. We're going to turn the feet towards the left, lengthen both legs, both arms wide. Bend the front knee onto the ball of the back toe, press that right hand across the body, reaching the left behind you. Press through the legs to cartwheel back to upright and then come to this horse stance, little play in horse stance, nice. So from here, we're turning the left heel out and that rolls the left hip in and it lengthens the left leg, we don't need to do more. And we're just going to turn the right foot out towards that short end of the mat, reach the arms wide and we're in warrior two. We haven't really had to do anything. We're firming the belly and the buttocks just a touch. Inhale, draw the palms together, lengthen the right leg and then exhale, look over the right hand as you bend the right knee, but reach the left arm back behind you as well. Inhaling up, firm belly, firm legs, firm buttocks exhaling down. Let's do one more. Inhaling up and exhaling arms down. Now we're doing our archer. So from the legs in this position, firm into the feet, reach your left hand forward and then draw that left hand back as you reach the right arm up, archer. And then back to warrior two. Reach the left hand forward, Draw open your bow, firm in the belly, and back to warrior two. We'll do just one more, reaching the left hand forward, shooting high, aiming high, and back to warrior two. Now here, last week we did lots and lots of extra uh, balancing poses, but this week we're going to add something different, but we'll do that on our next round. So a little softness in both knees, and we're going to step the left foot to the right at this end of the mat. Take a break for a deep breath in and a deep breath out while we do the whole sequence to the opposite side. Turn the palms forward, firm all of our supporting muscles, find length and strength. 
Inhale the palms forward and up, opening the chest, looking up and exhale, bring the hands together, soften over the knees and bow into your forward bend, taking a few moments in the forward bend perhaps to release any effort from the previous side of practice. When you're ready, you can take the hands behind the body. You can interlace them, hold wrist to wrist, elbow to elbow, as you choose. Opening the chest, softening the knees as much as you want to. Maybe a touch of lift in the belly if you need to. A little nod of the head or a sway of the head. And then relaxing the arms, let the fingertips graze the floor as you sit the weight back into the heels in a deep chair pose. We're going to straighten the legs a little and bend a little deeper, deeper two more times, straightening and bending. A little slow motion bounce. And then taking your weight onto your right foot, lift onto the ball of the left toes, step the left foot as far back as feels comfortable, deep breath in, deep breath out. Press through that front leg to bring yourself upright into a lunge, Deep breath in, deep breath out, and then relaxing the arms, returning to the long side of the mat. The left heel comes to the floor. You can turn your toes a little bit towards the right if you want to lengthen the front leg as well. And we're prepared for our twisting, twisting extended side angle pose and cartwheeling arms, which is just awesome. So reaching the arms wide, we're firm in the belly, we're going to bend the right knee, come onto the ball of the left foot, press the left hand across the body, reach the right hand behind you, extended side angle twist, and then cartwheel the arms back to the center. The toes are turning out. We've got a little play of the weight from side to side in our horse stance. Very good. We're going to lengthen both legs, pivot both feet towards the right side, arms nice and long. Bend the right knee onto the ball of the left foot, Press the left hand across the body, reach the right hand behind you, and then press through the legs, cartwheel the arms upright into our full stance, and a little play of the weight from side to side. One last time, turning the feet to the right, arms long, legs long, bend the right knee onto the ball of the left foot, press the left hand across the body, and then cartwheel through the arms, back to center, Find your horse stance. And then here, turning the right heel out to the right and turning the left toes out to the left, we're going to find our um, warrior two pose and inhale, bringing the palms together over the head. Exhale, look over the upturned left palm, reach the right hand back behind you at the same time. Use the legs, inhaling up. Find the strength in your feet, exhaling down. Inhaling up last time. And exhaling down. Maybe we need to do one more actually. Let's do one more. Inhaling. And exhaling. Why not? And then from our warrior two, which feels nice and buoyant, you know, nice and pliable and supported, we're going to reach the right hand forward to the left and then draw open the bow, reaching the left hand high, the elbow of the right arm back behind us. Back to warrior two, legs stay the same. Reaching the right hand forward, opening our bow, drawing it, aiming high, and back to warrior two. Last one, reaching the right hand forward, opening the bow, and back to warrior two. And then, from here, we're just going to get nice and pliable on our legs so that we can step the right foot to the left at the opposite end of the mat. Take a moment to rest in our Tadasana. Mountain pose. Allow the body to absorb that information. Adjust clothing as needed. Swallow to relax the jaw. And then we're ready to do the whole thing again, but we're going to add something at the end. So turning the palms forward, spending a, a little time to lift through the body, engage all of those supporting muscles. And then on your next breath in, reach the palms up 
as you open your chest and then exhale as you bring the hands through the center of the body into a forward bend. In your forward bend, reach the arms behind you, interlace the fingers, roll the shoulder blades towards each other. Lengthen arms and legs if you want to, Just keep the knees soft if you prefer for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Relax the hands, let the fingertips graze the mat as you sit into a deep chair pose for a deep breath in. Firm belly, firm buttocks, deep breath out. Weight onto your left leg, up onto the ball of the right foot, step the right foot as far back as feels comfortable, deep breath in. Deep breath out, press through the left leg to come into an upright squat, uh, upright lunge rather, deep breath in. Deep breath out, relax the arms down, turn to the long end of the mat, firm the left, no, right heel towards the mat, lengthen both arms. So we're just doing one of these on this round. So bending the left leg, coming onto the ball of the right foot, press the right hand across the body, reach the left hand behind you, and then pressing through the left leg, cartwheel the arms to center. We're going to do a little gentle uh, shift. And then from here, turning out the left heel, turning out the left, uh, the right foot to the right, reaching the arms wide, just one. Inhaling, reaching the arms over the body. Exhaling into warrior two, just one. Inhaling, drawing the hand forward. Exhaling, drawing your bow. Inhaling back to the center. And this time we're going to turn both feet to the long side of the mat, and we're going to do a little surface squat. So we're going to arms into his hands, bend one knee and take the opposite elbow towards the knee, and then come back to standing and to the opposite side. So here, as you bend your knee and fold, stick your bottom out. You don't need to touch the knee and the elbow together. That's not the point. It's the rotation. It's the spiral of the body. We'll do one more to each side. Very good. And again, and then coming back up to center, we're going to turn the feet to the right again. And here with straight legs, the left hip is falling into the center of the body. The right toes are pointing out towards the right side. We're going to lift the right arm up into the air to add trikonasana, but a scarabelli version to this. So we leave the left hip it, rolling in and then use the right hand, no, it's the left hand, to revolve the chest towards the long side of the mat without lifting that hip. And then reach your right arm over your right leg and then reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. There's no weight in the right arm. We've got firmness in both legs, a lift in the belly, firmness in the buttocks, Drawing the shoulder blades open, you can even look up towards your top hand. And when you're ready, turn the left palm upwards, press up to standing. We're going to continue going. We're reaching the left arm down and the right arm up. Legs are still long and straight. And then we're coming back to standing upright with both arms long. And this is a little extra bit as well. So we're reaching the left hand forward. And we're going to come into warrior three from here. So we're bending the front knee, we're coming up onto the ball of the back foot, and we're going to reach our hands forward and transfer our weight into that right leg, lifting the left heel up behind us for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then coming through upright to bend the left knee and the right elbow twisting into our twisted dancer. And then from here, we're doing running man like we did last week. So we're taking that left heel behind us, bending the right leg and taking the left elbow to the right knee as we sort of fold a bit forwards. This is a bit wobbly. And then coming back to center, we're going to lengthen the left leg in front of us and the left arm. And then back through warrior three or a flying warrior perhaps to step the left foot to the floor and bring ourselves back to the long end of the mat, pivoting on the toes for a forward fold. 
So in your own time, folding forward. If you want to, you can place the hands on the mat and gently sway one knee uh, to one side and then the other, or just sway the upper body. Or you can hold elbow to elbow, knees as bent as you like. When you're ready and you feel released, softening both knees, bending them quite deeply actually, and then pressing into the feet to roll to standing. And we're gonna turn the right foot to the right, make both knees nice and bouncy, step the left foot to the right and rest for a moment in Tadasana. So we can do the whole thing again to the opposite side. Well done guys. So turning the palms forward, firming all of the supporting muscles of the body, feeling that lift, breathing in, reaching the palms up, opening the chest. And as you breathe out, bring the hands together, fold through the center of the body into a forward bend. Reach the arms behind you, interlace the fingers, roll the shoulder blades towards each other. Do a little bit of Dvikonasana, releasing of the neck if you want to, or keep the knees nice and soft if you prefer. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Soften the hands, let the fingertips brush the floor as you sit into your chair pose, a deep squat for a deep breath in. Deep breath out, onto the right leg, ball of the left foot, step the left foot as far back as you can, deep breath in. Deep breath out, press through the right leg to an upright lunge for a deep breath in. Deep breath out, and then relax the arms, turn to the long side of the mat so that the left heel uh, firms to the floor, lengthen both legs, and we're ready for our cartwheeling twisting thing. I don't know what to call it, it's all good. Okay, so we're gonna bend the right knee, come onto the ball of the left foot for just one press across the body. And then cartwheel the arms back to the center for just one swaying goddess squat or horse stance if you prefer. And then turning out the right foot, turning out the left foot, coming into warrior two for just one. Inhaling, bringing the hands together and exhaling, looking over the upturned left palm. And then just one, reaching the right hand forward and drawing your bow. And then releasing back to center. And then here we're adding that surface squat on. So we're lengthening the front leg, turning both feet towards the long end of the mat, making our cactus arms, and then bending one knee, taking the opposite elbow across the body. As you lengthen the tailbone out behind you, keep your chest open, press through that leg and come to the other side. Imagine that your arms are stuck where they are. You have to turn through your torso to make the movement. Going, this is two to each side. We're gonna do one more to each side. Very good. Really strong in the legs. And then coming up to standing, turning both feet to the left. So the left hip, no, the right hip, sorry, has fallen in and your left toes are pointing out to that short end of the mat. Lift the left arm up and use the right hand to revolve the chest to the long side of the mat, not the hips, the chest. Then reach your left arm over your left leg. Allow it to draw the right arm up at the same time, long in the body, long arms, long legs, long torso, lift in the belly. You can even look up to your top hand if you want to. There's no real weight in this left arm. One more deep breath in and out. And then turning your right palm up, press up to standing. And as you do, just keep going, reaching the right arm down, the left arm up, opening that side of the body. And then coming back to standing, so we're gonna add on our balancing sequence. So reach the right hand forward, the hips turn to that short end of the mat. We're going to come onto a bent right at left knee and launch ourselves off a little, not so dramatically perhaps from the right foot into a warrior two, a three variation for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then bringing that right leg forward, 
bending the knee, taking the left elbow towards the right knee, twisted dancer. And then from here, we're gonna keep that leg bent, come back through center, send the right heel behind us and take the left elbow, right elbow, sorry, to the left knee to a running man pose. And then we're gonna press through that leg, she says, Reach the right leg in front of us, long and straight, long arms, long legs for a little twist and come back through a flying warrior. And gently place that right foot down, press through both legs, turn the feet to the short edge, as long edge of the mat even, for a forward fold in your own time. So coming into your forward fold, just doing a little gentle sway from side to side, if that feels good. And then bringing yourself back to the center, bending the knees very deeply, rolling through the spine to come up to standing, pressing through the legs. Awesome source, guys. So whew, it takes quite a lot of doing to do that and do all the talking as well. Um, but we've probably got time to do it one more time to each side. So let's do that. So we're gonna turn the left foot to the left, soft knees and step both feet to the front of the mat or to the top of the mat, bottom of the mat maybe, turning the palms forward, taking a deep breath in and out. Inhale, reaching the arms up, open your chest. Exhale, fold into a forward bend. Reach the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Relax the arms, bend the knees deeply, sit into your chair pose for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Weight onto the left leg, step the right foot back as far as you can for a deep breath in, deep breath out. Press through that front leg, come to an upright lunge for a deep breath in, firm in the buttocks, deep breath out. Relax the arms, right heel to the mat, long arms, long legs, and then bend the left knee. Come up onto the ball of the right foot, reach the right hand across the body, cartwheel the arms back to the center in your chair squat. This time, we're going to take the left arm over the right arm, either hold a chair squat, no, go squat, full stance, either hold the shoulders or come into a Garudasana and take one big circle in each direction. Doesn't matter what your arms are doing. Fantastic, back to the center, turn out the left foot, turn out the right foot for warrior two. One time, inhaling, pressing through both legs so they're long and straight, exhaling to warrior two. One drawing of the bow, sweep the left hand forward and then draw open your bow, aiming high. Back to the center, we're going to turn the feet to the long edge of the mat so the toes are pointing straight forward in front of us cactus arms, just the right leg, bend the right knee, take the left elbow to the right knee, back to the center, just the right leg, bend the left, uh, bend the right knee, take the left elbow to the right knee and back to center. From here, turn the feet to the right, left hip rolls in, we're lifting the right arm and we're going to rotate the chest only to the long side of the mat to come into our Trikonasana pose. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Turning the top hand, reaching yourself up and over. So you reach the left hand down, the right hand up and back to center. Now for the balancing poses, so reaching the left hand forward, soft on the right knee, pressing off the ball of the left foot to come into warrior three. And lifting that left heel behind you and then bending the left knee as you bring the knee forward, bring the right elbow towards the left knee, twisted dancer. If you want to try a running man, you lift that left heel behind you, bring the left elbow to the right knee, bending the right knee as much as feels comfortable. And then a straight leg twist with the left leg in front, the right arm long as well. And then through, a flying warrior of some kind, placing that left foot to the floor, cartwheeling the arms, 
So you're ready for a forward bend here. And releasing by gently swaying the chest from side to side or the upper body or just swaying through the knees, whatever feels good. Bend both knees deeply. Press through the feet to roll up. Turn the right foot to the right end of the mat, nice and soft on the knees, so you can step both feet to the opposite end. Rest in Tadasana for a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. One more time through, lifting the palms, reaching the arms up as you inhale. Exhaling hands through the center of the body into your forward bend, interlace the fingers behind the body or hold elbow to elbow for your Dvikon Asana variation. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Soften the hands, let the fingertips brush the floor as you sit into a deep chair pose. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Onto the uh, right foot, step the left foot as far back as you can. Deep breath in. Deep breath out, firm in the belly and the buttocks, upright lunge, deep breath in. Deep breath out, relax the arms, firm the heel of the left foot into the mat and straighten the right leg, arms wide for our twist, taking the weight into the right knee as you come onto the ball of the left foot, reach the left hand across the body and then cartwheel the arms back to the center, turning the toes out. And this time, right arm over left arm to hold the shoulders. If you want to, you can do Garudasana arms for one complete rotation. Doesn't matter how deep you bend in each direction. Very good. Coming back to the center, reaching the arms wide, step out the right heel, turn out the left toes as well. For one, reaching up, long arms, long legs. And coming back into warrior two, looking over the left palm. One swinging of the right arm forward and drawing your bow. And coming back to the center. And then here, we're going to lengthen the front leg, turn both feet to the long edge of the mat, cactus arms, and it's just the left knee that bends, bending the left knee, elbow to the left knee, and press back to We'll do it one more time. Bend the left knee, take right left knee, and back to standing. Then we'll turn both feet towards the left. Left, uh, right hip falls in, left arm up. Use the right hand to revolve the chest towards the long end of the mat. And then lengthen your left arm over your left leg, reaching up with the right arm at the same time. Firm belly, firm legs, firm buttocks. Deep breath in. Deep breath out, turn your right palm upwards, lift yourself upright, really using the legs and your core muscles to open the opposite way. And back to center. We're going to bring the right arm forward to the left, bend the left knee, come onto the ball of the right foot and just gently transfer the weight into the left leg for a flying warrior, deep breath in, deep breath out. And then bending, oh, sorry, Transferring that uh, right leg through, bending the right knee, taking the left elbow towards the right knee, twisted dancer, and then keeping your right knee bent, bring your right elbow towards your left knee, bending as much as you can, <laughs> she said, in running man pose. And then pressing through your leg, long arms and legs for a twist. And a final flying warrior. And stepping as lightly as you can onto your right foot, lengthening through your left leg, both feet pointing straight towards the long end of the mat and a forward fold to finish. So in this forward fold, you can spend a little longer if you like, just giving yourself a sway or holding elbow to elbow or uh, swaying through the legs if you prefer. And if you want to, here you can widen your feet and you can take the crown of the head towards the floor. You don't have to, it's just a variation for those who feel that they might need an inversion or a sense of an inversion for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. When you're ready, you can lift your chest a little. If you've been very wide, hop your feet back together a little and then soft knees 
rolling through the spine to come up to standing. And when you're ready, you can just gently bring your feet back towards you and standing in Tadasana. Close your eyes or gaze gently downward and observe the effect of your practice. And then when you're ready, we're going to come back into a downward facing dog. So I'll let you orientate yourselves wherever it's useful for you on the mat. Um, you can come into it in any way. I'm going to come into a wide uh, foot squat first to come down to release my hips, but you might prefer to just bend forward or you might prefer to come down onto the floor for something different. I find this is really useful after our standing work. And then we will meet up in a downward facing dog. And we're actually going to do some pigeon pose. So I know for a fact, there's one young lovely in this class who's not so keen on this kind of pigeon. So doing a reclining pigeon lying on the back if you prefer. And your down dog, just giving yourself a little settle. Uh, so a pedal, a soft undulation through the body, and then weight onto the left foot to lift the right leg up Soften the left knee so that you can bounce on that standing leg in your three-legged dog. And then you're drawing the right knee towards the right wrist and settling the left knee towards the floor, but keeping the knee bent and uh, knee on the floor and the left toes tucked under as well. So of course, a reclining pigeon if you'd like to. If you're doing this variation, you can have your hands anywhere that's comfortable. We're going to gently bob our left knee from side to side so we can rock a little bit in the hips here. And hopefully that gets you to access this uh, right hip and buttock. If you're doing a reclining pigeon, it's the same thing. You've got your knees bent in and you're rocking from side to side. And then if you're doing this active pigeon, just bobbing up and down in the center lengthening the left leg and then taking the left knee to the mat, just finding some space in your pigeon pose. And this is where we can investigate if you feel any pinching or twisting in the knee that's uncomfortable, then perhaps choosing an alternative. Uh, and the alternative is reclining pigeon. <laughs> that's all good. So then you can take your hands a little bit further forward, but keeping the chest quite uh, active, a softness in the elbows and just swaying the chest from side to side. And if you want to fold deeper, if it's useful for you, um, if you enjoy that, you can untuck the back toes, settle your hips down to wherever feels good and reach your hands as far forward as feels comfortable for you. I find that it's not quite so comfortable on this side. I like to stay a little bit higher. Just taking a couple of deep breaths. When you're ready, you can bring yourself upright, but only if you want to, to do a, a, a little stretch on the quads. So you can reach back with the uh, right hand to catch hold of the left foot or with the opposite hand if you prefer. And just either flexing through that foot or drawing the heel back towards your buttocks a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a uh, wave from side to side is useful. Maybe just holding it in feels good. And then gently releasing. We're going to come back through downward facing dog. So I'm inching my left foot in a little bit for support and then extending through that left leg, hips up, lifting the right leg high and rotating the foot at the ankle a couple of times in each direction before floating that foot down and making a little paddling in the dog. So if you've been doing a reclining pigeon, this is your opportunity to swap to the other side. And for us who are doing upright pigeons, lifting the left leg, softening the right knee, just bouncing on that knee in your three-legged dog variation. And then drawing the left knee towards the left wrist. It doesn't matter where the left foot falls, it's whatever is good for your hips. 
Keep the right knee on the floor, the right toes tucked under, and begin with a little gentle swaying of the hips from side to side. And this is a different way to work with the pigeon. It's an active way. You're not just uh, dumping your weight into some joints and hanging out there indefinitely. If you want to, you can stay in the middle and just bob straight up and down. I find this is the most useful uh, thing for me to find comfortable feelings in a pigeon pose. And then resting wherever feels good, reaching the hands a little bit further forward, swaying the upper body from side to side, just waving through the chest. And then if you would like to, you can fold a little bit further forward. You can come onto your forearms or you can reach your hands further away from you. Take your forehead towards the floor or towards some sort of support. Try not to have that sense of just meeting the end of your range of mo motion and hanging out there. It's, it's too intense a place to hang out for long. So slightly back from there is good, where you can feel that sense of length, of opening, of space but you haven't lost all of the support that we've spent this whole class building up. When you're ready, you can bring your hands back towards you. And if you want to do the variation where you reach back for your trousers or your foot, you can. And you can do that either with your left hand or with your right hand, whichever feels more comfortable to you. Flexing through the heel of the foot or just bringing the heel of the foot towards the buttocks. You can even wave it from side to side if you like. Whoop, she says, completely fallen out of it. So here we're going to uh, release and tuck the back toes, lift the left leg up, rotate the foot at the ankle a few times in each direction, and then float the left foot down, do a little paddling through the legs. And then when you're ready, coming into child's pose, if you have been doing reclining pigeon, just holding the knees towards the chest, reaching the hands forward in child's pose, reaching the forehead towards the floor or to some kind of support. Knees really wide here is useful to get the body down. Just taking a couple of deep breaths. And then when you're ready, you can prepare to move towards relaxation. So if you'd like to gather the things that you need for relaxation and your block that we're going to use as well, then you can pop on some jumpers, maybe get a blanket. I disturbed a spider in my blanket earlier, but I think it's run off to have, find a happy home somewhere else or somewhere in the Legos, which are at the other end of this room. So blanket handy, but maybe we don't need it immediately. Block handy, which we may need immediately. And then rolling onto your back. As you come onto your back, just allowing your body to find its comfortable spot here, releasing into this new shape, this new orientation, this new relationship with gravity. And then here we're going to begin with a little uh, twisting, so knees wide, feet wide, just swaying the knees from side to side. And then the next time your knees come down to the right, perhaps letting them fall towards the floor. If you've got the room and it feels comfortable, you can reach your left arm up. Encourage the inner left foot and inner right thigh, to, uh, sorry, inner left thigh towards the floor. And if you've got a bit more space, you can rest your right leg on top of your left thigh, right foot on top of your left thigh. This lovely open twist. And a deep breath in, soft shoulders, soft face, deep breath out. Maybe one more deep breath in and out.
and then uncrossing your legs, returning your left arm to center, firming the belly to move the legs back to the center, a little sway from side to side to ease out any tension from the held position. When you're ready, you can let the knees come down on the left side. If it's comfortable, you can reach the right arm up across, uh, up beside the head. Encourage the inner right foot and thigh towards the floor. And if you feel like you've got more space, you can rest your left foot on top of your right thigh. Taking a couple of deep breaths here, softening the shoulders, the face, the chest the tongue and the abdominal muscles. And then when you're ready to release, uncrossing the legs, draw the right arm back to neutral and firm in the belly, bringing the knees back to neutral as well. You're gonna bend the knees in towards the chest and just hug them towards us, make some circles with the knees. Apologies if you've already done a bit of this in those who did reclining pigeon. And we're going to go the opposite way as well. Using the hands now for the support on the knees, which is a softer, um, more gentle way to work with the body than expecting the abdominal muscles to do all of the moving. We're going to float the feet to the floor one at a time, take our blocks, and lifting the hips only enough to slide that block underneath the sacrum and just resting the back of the hips down on the block, arms out to the side, maybe stepping your feet slightly further away from the buttocks. This is a great place to stay if it feels super comfortable. If you want to do a bit more, you can lengthen your legs away from you and lengthen them out to the side, perhaps one at a time, perhaps both at the same time. If you're doing one at a time, just take a couple of deep, deep breaths and then uh, swap sides. If you've got both legs out, relaxing the arms away from the body, just feeling that sense of openness in the pelvis, maybe even the backs of the knees a little bit. Soft in the belly spacious underneath the low back. and then preparing to move. If your legs are both extended, bring the toes to point more upright again, firm the belly, slide the heels in one at a time, making sure that you're still really centered on your blocks. Sometimes we shift as we move the legs around and we're going to bend the knees into the chest and lift the legs up towards the ceiling, lift the feet up towards the ceiling. So it doesn't matter how bent your knees are here, um, as long as your weight feels held by your pelvis and the block underneath the back of the hips. If you want to extend the legs a little bit longer, um, you can. And then everyone should have a go at circling their ankles where they are, where the feet are. Going a few times in each direction. And then with the uh, legs just where they fall, uh, waving the soles of the feet at the ceiling. <laughs> I quite like doing this. And then when you're ready, you can leave the legs to settle where they settle, or you might prefer to bend the knees into the chest if you found this quite uh, challenging, that's not a problem at all. Just taking a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. And then everyone can bend the knees into the chest, Float the feet to the floor one at a time. Take a moment back in this supported bridge with the knees bent, just to let the pelvis settle, the effort in the abdominal muscles settle. 
See if you can release a little bit more tension, a little bit more effort from the chest, the face, the tongue. And then when you're ready, as gently as you can, as subtle a movement as you can make, slide the block out from underneath the back of the pelvis and release the hips to the floor. And we're ready for relaxation. So you guys go ahead and get yourselves into uh, Shavasana. For anyone who would like to, you can practice legs up the wall if you choose. I'm gonna turn some of these lights down so that it's a little less bright on your screens as well as at this end. So if you've already found your way to relaxation posture, that's great. I will teach this as if you're lying in Shavasana. If you've chosen another posture, that's great. You just continue to relax that way. So if, with your feet nice and wide apart, toes falling out to the side, arms relax away from the body with the palms turned upwards. Unless for some reason that feels really uncomfortable for your shoulders. Taking a moment here to gently wave the nose from side to side. And you can do that in any of the lying on your back postures, releasing effort from the back of the neck. And then when your head is ready to come to center, you can cross your arms over the chest so that you feel that space between the shoulder blades find the floor. Take a couple of deep breaths here, just feeling the weight of the arms. Softening that space behind the body. And then you can release the arms wide and cross them the opposite way. Just making sure that you get into the top of the opposite shoulder. Or perhaps the outside of that shoulder. For a couple of deep breaths. When you're ready, just releasing the arms wide again, turning the palms upwards. And if that still doesn't feel comfortable, resting the hands on the abdomen. Take this moment to make any adjustments you need to your body to bring it to a comfortable position. And then bring your body to stillness. Stillness is the most important part of Shavasana and for relaxation as well. Take a deep breath in and sigh out through your mouth. Repeat three times, a deep breath in, let all of your effort go. A deep breath in, let your muscles begin to relax. Last deep breath in and surrender your weight down into the mat. Allow your breath to fall into its natural rhythm and fall away into silence. Take your awareness to your forehead, feel it soften the space between your eyebrows spreading. The area around your eyes relaxing. Your mouth, tongue and jaw releasing. Take your awareness to the back of your body. Feel all of the parts of the back of the body that have been so strong and active and supported during this class. Allow them all to soften, release, surrender. The whole of the back of the body feeling heavy, warm, 
support us. Move your awareness to the front of your body. Become aware of the space over you and around you. Feel the touch of air on your face. The movement of your clothes on your skin as you breathe. The sensation of space between the feet, between the arms and the body. The sensation of holding space in the palms of the hands. Move your awareness to your breathing and gently deepen your breath. With each breath in, allow the body to fill with prana, light, energy, vitality, harmony, peace. With each breath out, releasing tension, fatigue, negativity, discomfort, and holding. Allow your breath to fall in this deep, slow rhythm for the remainder of your relaxation, softening a little deeper with every exhalation.
Continuing to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back to your hands and your feet by wiggling your fingers and toes. Maybe rolling your wrists, rolling your ankles. When you feel ready, take a deep breath in. Really stretch the face and yawn, stretch the body in any way that feels good. And in your own time, gather yourself knees into your chest and make any movements that feel good. Perhaps a little extra massaging of the low back with some circling. Or perhaps gently turning the head from side to side if that is useful for your neck. When you're ready, you can find your way onto your side. Just taking a moment, allowing the body to come around gently. And then in your own time, coming into any comfortable seated position, bringing the hands to the center of the chest, we're going to uh, rub the hands vigorously, pressing them quite firmly rubbing them quite fast but we're going to spend a little bit of extra time getting to that point of having nice warm hands so you don't have to be so vigorous as normal perhaps when you begin to feel that warmth building in the palms of the hands just keep rubbing for a few moments longer and then placing the hands over the eyes so you feel that warmth soften and release the area around the eyes. When you're ready, blinking into your palms a few times, releasing your hands down as you open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me in this practice this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel strong and vibrant in your body this weekend and for the week to come. Namaste.